Okay, so it is five past 11. Let's start our workshop. So firstly, good morning, everyone. Uh, here is Paul from Making Waves. Uh, thank you for joining us to the workshop UX Writing in Action. Uh, how this workshop will look like? Uh, I have to inform you that the whole workshop will be recorded. For the first 45 minutes, my great colleagues will show you the presentation. And after the main subject, we'll have a Q&A session. Feel free to ask any question using chat feature. We'll try to answer as many of them as it will be possible. Uh, during the webinar, please stay muted and leave the camera turned off. So now I want to introduce you our speakers. Anya uh, is a senior content editor and UX writer with a background in translation and copywriting. She's from Sweden, uh, but spent many years in the United Kingdom before moving to Poland in 2012. And Peter Jan uh, is a content editor from Belgium who has been working and making waves for almost two years on a project that includes copywriting, translation, content strategy, and also UX writing. So, please. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. If not, please let us know in the chat. Thank you so much for coming. It's uh, really great that a lot of people show interest in this topic. Um, as you know, we had a webinar a few weeks ago, which was about UX writing in general. Today, we will give you a glimpse of how UX writing works in practice with a lot of real life examples. It will be a lot of fun. Um, we have an agenda. First, there will be a short introduction with an example of an online shopping experience gone wrong that I experienced myself last week. Then Peter Jan will take a look at the homepage of uh, Vida, an IT security company. Um, we have a variation of other examples too, um, a video game page, contact form, a 404 page, a site navigation page, some website icons, a request demo form, and finally we will take a quick look at the website pavelosev.pl as the website of a uh, UX designer in Poland. And we will finish with a few takeaways. So if we move on to the next slide, um, the goal of the workshop is to show you how UX writing works in practice, highlight a few common issues around the internet, and suggest a few alternative solutions. The workshop is definitely not about pointing fingers making anyone feel bad about their own content. And I'm saying this because the examples we have are a mix of things that you suggested and a few things that we found ourselves on some of your websites. Now, if you didn't request us to look at your content, then we have removed the uh, name of the company. So it's completely anonymous but you may recognize all of a sudden a form or something else from, from uh, your own product. But we think it's important to point out that our approach is to view all websites and all digital products as a work in progress. Um, no one is perfect and there is always room for improvement and that's what UX is all about. And uh, one more thing before we start, um, it's important to know that all our conclusions are based on our own assumptions. Um, in a real life situation, we would ask for a lot of information about the company, the product, the goals, the target audience, and all these things that are so important in UX. So keep that in mind as well. So let's move on to next slide. Online shopping gone wrong. This is based on a true and tragic story that happened to me only last week. I um, was shopping online and I went to uh, a British clothes brand online shop and it started really well. I was greeted by this nice uh, welcome message. Hello, it looks like you're in Poland. If we got it wrong, please select your preferred options below. Um, but of course I am in Poland, so this was all good. Uh, it made me feel very welcome and I just went straight to start shopping and had a look around their website. 
on the next slide. Um, we see this is what I found, a beautiful skirt, and I just saw it and I wanted to buy it straight away. I'm sure you know the feeling. Um, um, so uh, I started going through the checkout flow and it started well as well. It was only when I came to the screen with the address, we will see it on the next slide. Um, as you can see, they have identified the country again as Poland. And I entered uh, the address of Making Waves in Krakow. And when I pressed confirm your address, we'll see what happened on the next screen. At the bottom of this picture, you see an error with this address occurred. There is no more explanation on about what has gone wrong. Um, it made me think that I must have entered some detail incorrectly. Maybe I gave the wrong postcode or something like that. So uh, of course I went back, I tried again, made sure that everything was correct, pressed the button and I came to the same screen and I had the same error message again. So then um, I thought, okay, there's something up with this particular address. It doesn't need to accept it. So, I tried with my uh, home address, which for now I have pretended to be Rene Um This time it allowed me to go to the next step in the flow. But as you can see here on uh, this image, it has changed the country to Portugal instead of Poland. And again, of course, as I thought I must have been, uh, I must have entered the wrong country. So again, back, made sure it said Poland, Press the button, and again it came. Um, I came to the stage, and Portugal. And um, so at this stage, I was very frustrated. I had spent a lot of time on this website, and of course, I really wanted to buy the skirt. So I found the contact details to customer service, and I sent them an email uh, with a very simple question. I'm trying to order a skirt to Poland. This is what happens. Do you know what's wrong? Uh, they responded very quickly. And uh, I was just very surprised that the, the answer was that they don't actually deliver it to Poland at the moment. This function is in review um, and will be available in the future. And that's it. So, um, now you may think, what does all this have to do with UX writing? Because this is a, a functionality issue yeah, that needs a developer to fix. That's true. However, they could have saved the experience completely with a few very simple UX writing um, techniques. Um, if we go to the next slide. Here are a few possible improvements they could have done to help me in this situation. First of all, uh, the best thing would have been if they informed me as soon as I came to the website that there are delivery restrictions, that they um, plan to deliver to Poland in the future, but this is not an option at the moment. Even better, they could have provided a newsletter sign up option. Um, through which I could be notified when the function is available. They actually had a second chance of doing this when I contacted customer service. Um, I was surprised that they didn't offer to get back to me when this uh, uh, functionality is in place. And um, they didn't uh, ask me if I wanted the newsletter either, uh, which is a real shame for them because I would have given them my email address happily to, uh, to get this information. And uh, number three, it would be great if they were more specific about any errors that occurred during the checkout flow. Um, I don't think I'm the only one who immediately thinks that I must have entered something incorrectly. Um, and very often it's completely beyond our control. So that's also a very good idea. So that was the introduction to today. I will now hand over to Peter Jan. And he will talk a little bit about Vida.pl. 
Yes, thank you, Anya. Uh, first of all, they started drilling here above my apartment, so I hope they will not continue. If not, it's going to be a little difficult, but let's, uh, let's hope it's, uh, it's going to stop. So as Anya already uh, mentioned, we received some nice input from some of you, and we're going to have a look um, at, uh, at the examples that all of you uh, sent to us and how we can potentially uh, make some improvements by, by using the right uh, copy. The first example is, uh, is we got from a company called Vida with their website vida.pl. Um, and uh, we had a look, uh, first of all, at their homepage to see, uh, to see how, how it looks like and how it is organized and if everything is, uh, is, is nice and clear. And this is what you, uh, this is what you see um, at the very beginning <clears throat> when you enter the homepage. So it, uh, it starts with the logo, the navigation, and then straight away you get, um, you get some uh, testimonials. And, um, and okay, I, I was thinking, I came to the website and I was thinking, well, this is great. This company has uh, clients that are, uh, that are quite happy with the work that they do. But uh, I was thinking, what, what do they do actually? Um, yeah, it is important to say, this is a website in Polish. So um, I used the Google Translate function uh, to translate it to English because some of you are, uh, are no Polish speakers. So uh, sometimes the English can be a little clunky, but it is, it's Google Translate, so that's why. Um, so I could see at the main navigation that this company provides some kind of IT solutions. That's still a pretty broad field. Um, and and I, I wanted to get to know a bit more because uh, the, the testimonials uh, just told me that the clients were happy, but not exactly what Vida is doing. So I scrolled down. And when I was uh, scrolling down, I, uh, I came across this image. First, we got this image that says, uh, for example, there is no chance against the crowbar. We find holes all over ensuring the safety of your work. Okay, we're, we're, we're dealing with a company that uh, tries to improve safety at work. Um, I was thinking, okay, uh, do, they like to, do they want to prevent people uh, falling down the stairs or, or uh, some other kind of uh, security or safety or prevention matters? Um, of course, I could have thought when I saw IT solutions and safety that it would, it would have been something about safety in, in the IT environment. But still, I had, to, I had to connect the dots myself and still wasn't entirely sure um, what, uh, what, this, uh, what this company is about, actually. Uh, then I scrolled even more down, and uh, there we have it. That's, uh, this, is, this is great. Like on the right-hand side, you can see the offer, IT security elements, IT management, and IT tools. So, um, so this is, uh, this is uh, nice, nice and clear. On the left-hand side, though, uh, there is a, a very nice uh, sentence saying, only peace will allow you to work well, which is uh, quite nice in terms of voice and tone, uh, because that's, uh, that's, what you want to, uh, that's what you want to be as, as a security partner, right? You want your clients to be, to be at peace and to uh, be able to sleep uh, well at night, that they don't have to worry, don't have to worry about uh, their IT systems being hacked. Um, I think, though, that the sentence that is below, check how we can support your system, should maybe get a bit more, uh, a, a bit more stress. And that's why it, it's, I think it probably should be the other way around, that this should get the bigger font, because it's a clear call to action to the, to the visitor of, of the homepage to go and check out the, um, to go and check out the, um, the services that Vida is offering. Because, uh, because that, is, uh, that is the value that you can provide to your clients and that is the first thing that you should try to communicate on the website. Um, so that's about the homepage. Yeah, so we, we would suggest to, uh, to mix a few elements uh, or to, to move a few elements up and down so that, um, that the user gets straight away a good idea of what Vida is all about. And then we went uh, browsing through uh, a few of the pages. Oh yeah, right. Um, when you're on the home page, let me just go back for a second. At the top right corner, you can see a button with "Ask for a product." Um, it's rather "Ask about a product." It's a bit like "O product" in Polish. Um, and to start with, maybe it's a good idea to uh, to um, open to open uh, to to make it more open because now the user is limited. You can only ask questions about uh, about a product, but you want to be open for uh, every client or user ask any type of, uh, of question, right? So maybe a, a slight copy change is, uh, is a good idea there. Uh, so when you click this uh, button, you come to this screen. Um, and here I, um, I thought, okay, this, this looks nice. Um, but I was looking for error messages actually, because when something goes wrong, that is when an interface should try to get the user back on track. 
and try to provide the uh, the right information so that the the user can can reach his goal basically. So I only gave my phone number. I didn't give an email address, and then I pressed the button Vishli to send, uh, and I got. Um, let me just what is this? Um, and I got a um, this error message in English. Please fill out this field. Um, it's a bit of a shame that it's in English because the rest of the website is in Polish. So it would be great if it, if there were a bit of consistency here in terms of language. A second thing is, I don't know if you've noticed it, but there are two more error messages on the screen. And it's really hard to see. That's why I zoomed in a little bit. Um, and these are the two at the very bottom. Capture field cannot be empty. Please enter a value. And an error occurred. First of all, they're hardly visible because uh, there's hardly any contrast between the backgrounds and, and the font. So um, a color change is, is quite necessary there because a lot of people will have missed that. That's the first thing. A second thing is that the language is quite techy. Please enter a value. Is, is, uh, that's probably how developers would talk to each other. Um, when a user goes to the website, maybe an option like tick the, the, the capture box, because that's what you have to do, tick the box. That's uh, going to be better understood and is less uh, alienating for, um, for the user. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm asking myself at the very bottom, an error occurred if this uh, error message is actually necessary at all, because I don't think that there is uh, a scenario where only this error message would appear. If there is an error message, then it's going to be pointed out higher on this, uh, on this screen what the error actually is. So, um, so I think it might be redundant unless there is a specific scenario where that is not the case, obviously. As, as Annie already mentioned, we're making assumptions here. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, then let's move a bit further. Yes, so Vida also provides uh, IT security trainings, apparently. And they have a separate page for that, uh, the training page. And it's a really nice page, but on the left-hand side, you have uh, a white a column with a, a light background with the description of the, um, of the training and uh, the person who is, uh, who is leading this training and, and the topic and stuff like that. On the right-hand side, you have what you see here on the screen with the black backgrounds, the registration form. Um, and because of the two backgrounds, at first, I was a little confused. Is, is this a general sign-up registration form or is it connected to to the training that is uh, that is on the on the left hand side of, of this website, uh, that's why I would suggest to maybe include the title of the training uh, here at the title at the at the very top. So training registration for um, for training about uh, anti antivirus um, software or stuff like that. I don't know. I'm I'm not a specialist in the field. Um, then all the rest is great. There are uh, fields uh, to give your to give your uh, contact details. That's all. That's all good. But then um, you need to tick uh, one box and one box and the other box is optional. And as you can see, the the first box that you need to tick is um, is a legal issue about uh, data processing, and it is quite long. Um, and I actually wonder if anyone would read it uh, first, and secondly, if if they would understand it, if they would read it. So, um, and it also comes a bit in the way of the user experience. It is quite long. Um, so it's, it's maybe not ideal to put such a long sentence there. What, what could be an option is to, uh, to put something like, uh, I agree to the processing of my personal data according to the privacy policy and terms and conditions. And then include a link. Uh, then include a link to a page with the privacy policy and the terms and conditions. Uh, that way you provide the necessary legal information and you also um, you also maintain a good user experience where this big block of text is uh, is actually not necessary. And a final thing, the button uh, at the bottom says participate or I participate rather. And I'm just wondering when this when this uh, user gives his contact details and clicks the button, is he automatically enrolled in the training, or does it still need approval? Because if it still needs approval then this button might be a little misleading because when you say I participate, the user will, will, uh, will, um, will uh, think that, okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm part of this training. It's, it's sure. Um, but if, if that is not the case, then uh, maybe it should rather be something like uh, send requests because uh, you're still in the request phase of, uh, of attending a training. So those are a few thoughts. And then the final thing I'd like to discuss uh, from Vita.pl is this nice uh, piece of content. 
uh, this is um, this is a section that is nearly in on every page, I think. And it says, contact us for a free consultation. You ask, we answer, with a button to, uh, to get a phone call within half an hour. So I can imagine that this is very important for business, that this is a major, uh, a major sales uh, gener generator, so to say, that a lot of leads come through free consultations, and that is something that you would like to push as a company. The, the little problem that I see here is that it's almost always at the very bottom of the page, or very often very, very low on the page. And uh, so it's, it's a little hidden for the user. So um, if you want to push free consultations and, and create leads, I would really move this part up the page so that it really uh, catches the eye of the user and that he can, uh, that he can uh, order his free phone call, basically. Um, so, these, uh, so this was uh, Vita.pl. Let's, uh, let's shortly uh, uh, have a look again. So first of all, at the home page, start with a clear message about the company's activities and the value that you can provide to your clients because that is what the user is looking for. Uh, what can this company do for me? Uh, the button, ask about a product, make it a little broader, just something like get in touch or contact us, for example, uh, to, uh, to create, um, to, to give the user the feeling that uh, he can get in touch with you uh, always and for any matter whatsoever. Uh, the testimonials are really great because they show uh, they show that you're a great partner and uh, that you uh, that you are uh, that you can be trusted uh, to collaborate with. But uh, putting that at the very top, the, the user is not there yet when he enters the home page. When the user enters the home page, he wants to get to know who is this. He wants to get to know you as a company and your activities. And uh, once he has understood that, then you can move on. Ah, okay, and and they do IT security, and their clients are very happy with their work. So. Definitely keep them, but move them maybe a little lower on the page. Uh, the legal copy should be minimized um, for, for user experience purposes, basically. Um, and, and using links uh, to a specific privacy policy or uh, terms and conditions page might be uh, a solution for that. Uh, the request for free consultation should be further up the, uh, should be further up the page, so higher on, on each page. So, uh, so more people will see it and will request this free consultation. And uh, make sure that the design works, uh, that there is enough contrast between the font and the background, that everything is readable. Because if something is not readable or if you can't see it, then it might as well not exist, basically. So uh, it's, uh, it's good to bear that in mind. A second uh, example that we got were uh, two pop-ups of a game, basically. I don't know what the game is exactly, but uh, the first pop-up is this one. It's an announcement saying that the game will get an update, and on the next screen you will see the uh, announcement that the game has been updated, that the update is there. So, um, as you can see here, um, this is um, a pop-up that covers the entire screen of the phone. Announcements, a big game update is coming soon. Um, the mere format of the screen is already suggesting that it is an announcement. So I don't think that uh, it has to be mentioned again. We can go straight to business. What is the message that you want to announce? And then uh, I would say put coming soon instead of announcement. Um, and to engage, to engage the user a little bit more, I would change the text as well a little bit, uh, something something fun, something more uh, upbeat, like this, this game is getting updated, soon you'll be able to, and all the different uh, functionalities that will, be, uh, that will be added after the update. Um, but then there is uh, a message that is less, uh, less, uh, less nice, actually, because as you can see, the current, the current game process, uh, progress rather, will be reset, so the user will lose a bit of, uh, of the progress. And um, as it is put now, it is quite dry, um, and I think it wouldn't hurt to acknowledge the fact that this is an annoying thing. Um, that's why I gave the suggestion, as you can see here, unfortunately, the update will reset your current game progress. It's not much, but it, it kind of gives the impression, okay, this sucks for you, we know that, and, and, um, but know that we will compensate you for that. Um, it, it's, um, it's a matter of, of showing a bit of extra empathy towards, towards the user, and this will create, normally will create, uh, more goodwill from the user towards uh, towards the game, towards your brand, etc. So this was uh, the coming up or the coming soon pop up, and then the update is there. Um, and here as well, um, there are a few tiny things that uh, that we thought of. First of all, a new update, as it is put now on the screen, 
um, we thought, okay, probably every update is new. So it, it might be a bit redundant to put the word new there. So maybe just go for update or game update. The game is getting an update. Um, and um, on this screen, there is no word about the loss of the current game progress. And uh, I think that might backfire a little bit because it has been announced before, but uh, then you assume that the user will remember this, which is not always the case. Um, and when he gets this message, this very happy message, okay, there's a new update, but uh, a few seconds later, he sees that his progress is lost, he will be frustrated. So it, it is better to, um, to not put or to not create any unpleasant surprises and to be just very transparent and open towards the user. Okay, you lose your game progress, but uh, here, be, here you get a gift, 50 diamonds, as you can see, um, because you are such a, a valued player, such a, a trusted player of our game. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then, as Anya already mentioned, uh, we also had a look at uh, the websites of, uh, of many of you. Uh, but we anonymized uh, we anonymized all of them, so um, only the people whom to whom it may concern will will, rec will probably recognize uh, the examples. Um, a first example is a CTA, uh, a button to reach a contact form, um, and this one is quite wordy. It says "contact us" as a title, and then on the button again, "contact us via our online form." Um, of all these words, I would only leave two there: uh, "contact us" on the button. Uh, all the rest is uh, is rather unnecessary uh, because the mess you get the message across, um, and and the user has to read less words basically. So it will be it will be clearer. So what I did, I uh, I clicked this button, and then I came to this contact form. Um, first of all, um, it is it is long. That was my first impression. This is this is quite long. Uh, and as you can see, there are many, uh, many stars there, so there are many required fields. Um, so this, this is already a bit of a burden. Um, some users might, might not even want to fill it out because it is a bit too much, maybe. Um, and um, well, I don't know how, the organ how, how it is organized, obviously, this contact form. We're talking about a pretty big company in several countries all over the world. So maybe it is necessary to get, to get a bit more information. Um, what I did is I went looking again for error messages. So um, I didn't fill out anything and I just uh, clicked the submit form button and this is what I got. Uh, a ton of error messages, obviously. Um, and there's a bit of variation there. They're not always that consistent. It starts with please select first name and then it goes on with please give last name, email address, company name. And then it switches to this field is required then back to please give a message. And at the very bottom, it says, accept the privacy. Um, please give, in my opinion, is probably uh, the best, the best uh, way to, um, to put uh, an error message in this particular case. It's polite and it's very clear what the user has to do. Um, at the, for, for the first name, it says, please select. This kind of implies that there is a long list of first names that the user has to make a choice of, which is, uh, obviously not the case. So, uh, so this, this might be a bit weird and come across as weird. Um, and then it switches to this field is required. So maybe also um, this could be changed to please give your address. And then at the bottom, accept the privacy. I think something might have gone wrong there uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, coding or something because the A is not capitalized. So maybe it's the full statement says, please accept the privacy policy or something, I don't know. Something has, has, uh, has gone a little wrong, it seems. But, um, but uh, yeah, there, so there's, there's a bit of need for, for consistency um, throughout the, these error messages. Um, so this, uh, this, this will help you, this, this will help to give a good impression of your brand as well, basically. There are small things, but they all, they all have an effect. Um, another example is an uh, error page, a 404 page. So if a page cannot be found, then uh, um, we uh, saw this one on a website. It's, uh, it's very short, it's very straightforward and quite polite as well. Page not found, sorry. So you know exactly, uh, you know exactly what's, um, what's going on. But then below, um, to get the user back on track, they suggest to do a search. Uh, search with another search word and then the search bar says search. So that's a lot of searches. Um, and, and maybe um, it's, it's an idea to, to change the wording or, uh, and also to add maybe a link to the homepage. Um, 
maybe um, maybe say something like uh, get get back on track and search for one of our products or one of our services. Uh, but that is that is just an idea. Um, this same company, we had a look at their uh, information architecture and their navigation, basically the navigation of, of their websites. And when you go to the services, this is this is what you uh, this is what you see. Um, it is quite overwhelming and a little uh, a little daunting because there are a lot of words. Uh, and and as you can see straight away, um, everything or many things, nearly everything, is double. So you see workwear, workwear collections, industrial wipers, industrial wiper collection. So we were just wondering, um, maybe this could all be a little more compact and put together so that uh, not every, everything needs to, be, uh, needs to be there twice because now it is, it is a long list of, of, of words and also what is, what is the exact difference between the two pages? Um, you, can, you can make your assumptions on that, but it's not entirely sure. So maybe it's, it's, it's an idea to rethink uh, the structure of, of, uh, of, of this navigation uh, just to make it, uh, just to give a better overview and to, to guide the user better and make it easier for him to know uh, where to go, basically. Um, this, um, this company also has um, a nice page with uh, some case studies of uh, work that they did for clients. And uh, I browsed through it, and and uh, seems like they, they they did a lot of very good work. And I saw for every case study, as you can see here on the image, there are different icons depending on the service that they provided. Um, the problem is, however, that I didn't see those icons anywhere else on the website. Maybe I missed them, but I I, I looked uh, I looked a bit all over. And um, also, for example, when you hover over the uh, over the icons, it doesn't say or there's no little text box uh, appearing that says uh, this icon means, um, for example, workwear or industrial wipes, uh, wipers or something like that. Um, so it's it's uh, it's nice to know that they provided a lot of uh, services for those company uh, for those companies. But what it is exactly, you need to really click uh, to click to the um, to the case study and and do the work yourself do all the reading and I think if if there are potential clients that are looking for a very specific uh, very specific service that thanks to those icons they might know exactly which case studies to read because those uh, those companies will get, uh, have gotten the service that they are interested in so it might be it might be something worth considering because uh, that might uh, make the, the life of, uh, of the users and, and potential clients easier to get to know uh, your company and your work, basically. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to hand over to Anya now for uh, a few more examples. Thanks, Peter Jan. Um, yes, we have picked out one more form. Uh, this one is about requesting a demo. If we just... Um, go through the fields on the form first. It starts with business email. Then there is a drop-down list for company size, uh, a field for telephone number, and then two consent uh, tick boxes. Submit button and a little bit of legal stuff at the bottom. Um, my first thought when I came to this page was um, business email I guess that it means that I can't enter a Yahoo address or a Gmail address. Um, at the same time, you know, I have registered a business in Poland without having a, a, a company email address. And I have also worked for other companies where I haven't had a specific business email address. So, um, yeah, that was a little bit of a... Um, Kind of a little bit of a hesitation there for me when I saw this. Um, I also wondered if all these fields are required or not, especially the phone field. Um, the first consent box says, I give consent for an email and telephone contact in order to propose an individual one-on-one -on -one product demonstration. Reading that, that makes me think that maybe they are both required, but it's not clear. And um, I just wanted to test these things, so I started by uh, entering a Gmail address to see what happens. And if we go to the next slide, the next slide, 
Um, it didn't give me an error message, but I couldn't send the form and it highlighted the field in red. So um, it confirmed my suspicion you know, that I can't enter a personal email address there. I think it could be clarified in some way. Um, the second thing I wanted to test if I can send the form without giving away my telephone number. I don't like giving my telephone number uh, to anyone. I don't like being phoned unless there is an emergency. Um, and also the form doesn't kind of reassure me um, what the phone number will be used for. It does say in order to propose an, uh, a product demonstration, but it seems uh, unnecessary. You can do that by email, surely. Um, so again, I try to submit the form without the phone number. And then we go to the next slide. And here I do get an error message. Unfortunately, it's in Polish. Um, and this is the English version of, of, of the website. So uh, this would be a problem for many foreigners in Poland. Uh, I have lived here for eight years and I can work out what this message means. It's okay. It's not super easy. <laughs> and I know a lot of people who, uh, they will have to ask someone or put it in Google Translate to, to try to understand it. So just based on this um, very uh, short form, there are actually a lot of um, recommendations we can do if we go to the next slide. Possible improvements. Um, first of all, if there is an error, it's really good to have some text that explains what the error is and what I have to do to put it right. Uh, translate the Polish error text to English. Um, explain what the email and phone number will be used for. It would be nice to have some reassurance uh, just to say, um, if you plan to send out marketing information, for example, or uh, will I get sales phone calls from you in the future? Um, that would be nice to know. Even better, if there was an option to do this only by giving uh, away the email, then I would definitely go for that, and that would encourage me to submit the form. Um, some uh, forms have the option where people can indicate which kind of contact they prefer. So maybe you request both email and phone, but uh, people can specify if they want to be contacted by phone or email. Uh, there was a mention of a newsletter, but no explanation or encouragement as to why I should sign up. Um, for sure, I don't want random emails in my inbox. However, if you had uh, specified uh, what kind of news I can get from the newsletter, what the benefit is for me, then maybe I would have ticked that box. And also it's often good to confirm uh, when the newsletters will be sent out, how often. And finally, it's often a good idea to write something else than submit on a button to make it a little bit more specific. In this case, maybe send requests would be an idea. And finally, it's always good to indicate when to expect the reply. And this doesn't have to be precise. Um, it's just good to know, you know, do you aim to do this within the hour, the same day, within three days, within a week? Um, some kind of indication there would be great. So that's um, most of the examples. We have one more um, slide here. And this is um, it's one of you, uh, you guys who suggested we have a look at the website pavelorzek.pl. Uh, this is the personal website of a UX designer. And uh, as you can see, he's taking uh, quite a different approach. It looks a bit like a Word document. And um, he starts off by saying, because I got bored with all that bloated internet. And it's completely stripped down and bare. And uh, in a way, it's, um, it's the opposite of what uh, most companies are trying to make, you know, very uh, fancy, nice looking websites. And um, 
for me personally, I think this is great uh, because it's um, it's sometimes a good way to stand out is to just go back to basics and uh, focus on the very minimum. And uh, for me, it works. It would be really interesting to hear what you think. Feel free to leave a comment um, about this. Uh, my only um, comment really would be that he has a link to a blog and that was very interesting to me but when you click on the link you come to a page without any content at all and, and maybe he's planning to have a blog in the future that would be nice to know in that case um, yeah so that's it we have uh, a number of takeaways though and I will hand over to Peter Jan for that yeah, uh, so uh, we went through all the examples that we uh, got from you and harvested on the internet, basically. And um, I think we can we can wrap it all up by by giving a few general uh, remarks that uh, that are good to bear in mind uh, when thinking of the copy on on any digital interface. Um, first of all, every word matters. Um, I know I have been uh, nitpicking and and splitting hairs, but um, some people say people do not read on the internet. Well, they really do. Uh, so every every single word is very important and should be considered um, if it is um, if it is according to voice and tone to the of, of your brand if it uh, conveys the right message if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't evoke any wrong emotions thoughts expectations so it's it's very important to to think of every single word and what the impact is on the experience of the user. Um, the second point there is the holy trinity of, uh, of UX writing. Basically, uh, you need to write uh, in a clear, concise, and useful way. And this is the most important. This is a lot more important than um, getting your particular brand voice out there um, because um, you, want the, you want to help the user to reach their goals. And this is the, the, the way to do it. If you can infuse a little bit of brand voice in there, that's great. But uh, those three things need to be taken care of first before you can do that. Um, thirdly, try to uh, try to apply conversational writing. This means that this doesn't mean that you need to dumb down your texts or you need to use a lot of slang uh, or or make a lot of grammatical mistakes or whatever. No, not at all. Um, it just means that um, you need to try to create a conversation between your interface, the interface of your digital digital product, and the user because it will be it will be going back and forth and when it goes very smoothly then the user will have a great experience try to do this according to the voice so the the brand voice how you want uh, your brand personality to be um to be portrayed on 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 your product uh on on yeah on your digital product but also according to the tone and with tone we mean the the context uh, of the user within the user journey um, you will write in a different way uh, an error message when the user is frustrated than you will write a confirmation, a confirmation message when the user is happy or relieved that he has reached one of his goals. Um, that also kind of applies uh, to the next point. Uh, so it's all about empathy and try to, um, try to put yourself in the place of the user and anticipate which concerns, frustrations, thoughts, emotions he might have at that very moment and try to, uh, try to provide the, the, the necessary guidance and the necessary reassurance um, to, to, um, to give the user uh, the feeling of being guided uh, through, um, throughout the, the, the interface without being lost. It's very important. Um, try, to, uh, try to be consistent with uh, whatever you do. Uh, for that, style guides can be a very good idea. Um, do you write uh, numbers with uh, numbers like a two or a two as a TWO um, and date forms, date formats, uh, other things, uh, title case, sentence case. Uh, there are many, many, uh, many options, but um, you should try to be consistent because that as well uh, reflects on, on your brand image if, uh, if you are sloppy or if you are nice and consistent with everything that you do. Um, design and content should work very closely together because um, the, the content on a website is part of the design if you want it or not. Um, so you, you can write all the right words, but if they are put and not at the right place, then the user will lose, uh, will, will, will lose track of, of where he wants to go and how to reach his goals. So um, there, should be, there should be a lot of, uh, a lot of collaboration between 
uh, design and content. And a few examples of that we, we've seen here um, in, in, the, in the screenshots that we, uh, that we discussed. For example, the font. The font should be nicely readable. The colors as well. Make sure there's enough contrast that, it is, uh, that you can read it. Uh, the layout of the page. Which content element do you put where? Well, which will have the most stress? Which will influence my uh, reaching my business goals or will influence uh, what the user needs at that very moment? And also icons, uh, that's uh, a particular topic that I, um, that I discussed a bit earlier. But that's also, that's also very important to make sure that it is part of a bigger whole and that, um, that everybody understands it. And the last point is also very important uh, to, it, to understand that all the content in your digital products are connected to different business units within your company. Um, the way uh, you, the, the brand voice, um, the brand voice that you use in, in marketing, uh, uh, in marketing materials, for example, or advertising or whatever, will also be, uh, will also have to be part of uh, the content that you put on, on, on your website or in your, or in your app. Um, there has to be a good uh, connection also with customer service. The, the, the example that Anya gave uh, when she was buying the skirts, Apparently, customer service had some information that the content team or the team that is taking care of the website, uh, they didn't have that information. And if the, the website team would have gotten, would have had that information, they could have anticipated that and uh, create some kind of message to, uh, to avoid uh, the user being frustrated. Um, so yeah, these were, uh, these were the takeaways, basically. And, uh, and this was it. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'm uh, I'm very uh, curious to uh, to see what questions you have. Thank you very much, Peter, Jan, and Anya. Uh, so let's start the Q and A session. The very first question is from Kalina. How often are you clashing with SEO people? How often am I clashing with? Huh. Um. How often I'm, are we? I'm you're happy sitting... to answer that actually. If you don't yeah, you're sitting right ahead. next to yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. Um, we have in the office a couple of SEO guys who are very on the ball, very um, um, careful, <laughs> and uh, but it, it's great. Yeah, they uh, they always point out a number of things that I can do to my texts for SEO. Um, yes, occasionally there is um, there is a clash between what I want to write and what they want me to write. And in those cases, clarity has to have the first priority. Um, but um, it is sometimes a bit of a balance, yeah? Um, and sometimes compromises have to mm -hmm. take place, but um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it, it is a balance between readability and findability, right? Because SEO, if SEO makes that your content is being found online, and that is still the most important because it, if, it's, if it is not found, it's, it's like it doesn't exist. Um, but if SEO, uh, SEO updates or SEO optimization stands in the way of, of readability or, or, um, or um, the, the image that you want to uh, create, then you need to look for something in the middle and create that, that balance as you, uh, as you mentioned, Anya. Uh, so the balance between being findable and being readable, it's uh, it's a slippery slope, but um, you you uh, you have to ride it basically. <laughs> okay, thank you. So the next question is from Kasia. In one of the examples, uh, we could see a lot of read more buttons under the excerpts of articles. What do you think about such solution? Mm -hmm. I think it's oh, the, better yeah, to ahead. be specific if possible. Um, yeah, because it. Um, I, can, I can see when the, there are maybe cases um, where it's hard to be more specific, but it's definitely worth uh, thinking of more specific call to actions than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, this is this is an ideal uh, an ideal case to use um, to use A/B testing, right? Like, do you put read more on the button? Do you put uh, just more? Do you put learn more? Uh, all the different uh, all the different varieties out there. You can you can just test it with A/B testing, and and I mean, uh, the user is always right. So you can have endless discussions. What is the best? But you're only gonna know what has the biggest effect when you test it, and that's uh, that's probably the most important. Okay, thank you. So the next one is from Dominica. Uh, in case we want to improve our applications content, where should we start? 
analyze uh, one view after another or start with some specific action? Mm -hmm. um, I think I think you um, um, you should first um, point out which uh, which phases in the app experience are key to reach your goals um, to help the user get to where you want the user to go basically for you to reach your goals and then start looking at that but also bearing in mind the entire flow what what does the user know at which given moments in the app experience for example an, an onboarding uh, flow of an app when the user creates a profile can be quite long um, so it has to be a balance uh, between um, between asking the user for a lot of information but not too much so that it doesn't get tired and, and get rid of the app for example um, so so it's about defining key key elements uh, that are connected to your business goals, basically. To, uh, and, and that's where you should look uh, if there are any uh, stumbling blocks on the, on the designs that you have, and then see how you can, uh, how you can improve. And again, uh, here, numbers and testing can, can come in handy to point out, okay, at this step in the onboarding stage, that, much, uh, that percent of users drops off or leaves the app. And when there is a big drop-off rate, you can see, okay, this screen is probably a bit problematic. We should, we should try to review this. Okay, thank you. So then we have another question from Kasia, but it will be great if you also check it out uh, in your chat uh, feature, uh, how it looked like, because it is with example. So I'll read it. Uh, how do you manage to keep your text both short and understandable for the client? Uh, yesterday, I had this situation where developers gave me admin text. Header with means nothing to the user because it's a tech term. Uh, for them, uh, these are texts coming from plugins or temps installed on your website. As you can see, this is understandable, but well, rather longish. Um, you, you're going to take this one, Anya, or? Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very common issue. Um, um that the, the developers have such a different point of view um which is very difficult for the end user to to grasp and um, um it, it's not easy <laughs> but um i would i would start by thinking about what does the user need to know in order to complete the task in question and move on in the flow mm -hmm. and that's the important thing um, sometimes I go and speak to the developers as well and ask them a lot of questions. Um, and I think that helps actually having a good communication with the developers um, because they don't always realize at all. Um, for them, it's a perfectly uh, sensible <laughs> thing to write there. And if you go and speak to them and uh, explain uh, the situation and um, that can be a, a, a way to um, reach another solution. Yeah, exactly. Fully agree. And okay. I mean, yeah. it's, it's maybe a good idea to, to bear in mind the, the three principles that I mentioned with the takeaways, try to be clear, concise, and useful. And uh, I mean, admin text is very concise, um, but it's not very clear and it's probably not gonna be useful for the, for the end user. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's a matter of finding the balance to to get the developer's perspective, but also you can give the user perspective, and and, uh, and then you can assess what what changes need to be made. Um, so this text, as you suggested, um, is a bit longer, but it is probably clear. Uh, the user will have uh, will have a better understanding after he reads this than when he reads admin texts, for example. Okay, so we don't have now more questions. Uh, so thank you very much uh, and have a wonderful day and um, it's almost the weekend so have a great time and talk to you soon on the next webinars thank you thanks a lot bye thank everyone thank you bye bye thank you bye